Hey kids and welcome to another week of Kids Church. And uh, I can't believe this, but I think we've been doing this about nine weeks now of just different messages away from uh, away from church. So I mean, this is this is crazy. And uh, I only have really one announcement for us today because I wanted to talk about this summer. As you guys know, every summer we do an awesome VBS that we have so many kids. We have about a thousand people on campus every single day between the kids, the volunteers, the staff. You know, it's like, you add the parents in, it's probably 2,000. And uh, it just doesn't look like this summer we're gonna be able to have that many people on campus safely. And so we're going to change directions. We've decided uh, that we're going to do something that we actually think could be even better. So we are going to be doing our VBS and we're calling it the heist. And, uh, and you're like, the heist? Yeah, well, because it kind of feels a little bit like our school year, you know, got heisted from us. Our summer has kind of been, you know, it's like not gonna be the same. It's been a little heisted. Even VBS, the way that we've always done it, has been heisted, has been taken away. But we are gonna use it to our advantage. As, as you know, the Bible says, all things will lead to the glory of God. And, and so we really wanna use this summer as an awesome opportunity, as an awesome outreach. And so we're going to do a competition among kids. And uh, you're gonna compete against one another through an app. And so how it's gonna work is you're gonna watch a live video in the morning from us that will premiere each day that'll be just like the stage productions in the past. And then from that video, you're gonna get clues and puzzles that you're gonna have to figure out, upload through the app. And when you upload those, you'll get points based about how fast you finish, how creative you are. You'll have to upload pictures. You might have to go uh, to a park and take a picture of something. And it's gonna be a very interactive experience and you will compete against all the other kids. And at the end of the week, the winning child, the winning teams will receive champion t-shirts. And it's gonna just be awesome. And here's the best part you're not just gonna be able to compete against kids in San Diego or that just go to Horizon because this is open to anyone, which means if you have cousins that live across the country that they, you know, are friends that live in New Jersey or they live in Texas or North Dakota, they can play. If you have, you know, people that are watching, some of our friends, uh, you know, are from New Zealand and they've been watching, they can play. People from all over the world could play if they wanted to and we can all compete in this summer experience and so it's going to be such an awesome time you guys are going to want to be a part of it it's going to be that week of july 20th and after you register we'll start registrations up that last week weekend in may and then we'll start sending out a supply box we can you can pick it up at the church we can mail it to you in the supply box you'll get a t-shirt and you'll get all your supplies that you need for the heist. It's gonna be such an awesome time. I'm so excited about it. The children's team so excited about it. We've talked to some parents and they're excited about it, so you should be too. So start telling your friends, start telling your neighbors, start telling your cousins, start telling everyone that you know. We already have another church that wants to partner with us and compete uh, along with us. And so if you have other friends that go to other churches, bring them too. We can have as many people as we want, so we're not gonna be limited to five, 600 kids. If we want 10,000 kids competing, awesome. So get friends, get neighbors, get everyone, get them all excited because this will be the best week of the summer. So much fun, you won't wanna miss it. And sometimes, I know some of you guys have missed in the past because you've been on vacation. Well, guess what? If you're on vacation that week of July 20th, you can still compete. This is going to be the best summer ever. The heist, a Horizon VBS coming up sooner than you think. It's going to be amazing and uh, you won't want to miss out. So let's get on our feet now. Let's do some worship. After worship, I will get into the Bible. All right, here we go. Fine. 
everybody. Are you ready to do the memory verse with me? Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Galatians 6, 9, nerve. One more time. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Galatians 6, 9, nerve. Keep practicing. I'll see you next week. Bye. All right, guys, it's Bible time. So uh, today I want to make sure you guys all get your Bibles because we're going to actually be going through uh, a, a two different chapters in Acts. And so go run and grab your Bibles. I'll talk for a minute while you grab your Bibles. We'll you know, talk about uh, how the weather's been, how school's coming along, how homeschooling, how's your homeschooling teacher, all these things. Grab your Bibles. Uh, turn it to Acts. Remember, you got go to the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. And so last week we were in Acts 2, uh, and uh, now we're in Acts 3. But if you remember, this is set where Jesus, he uh, has ascended to heaven, so he resurrected from the dead, came back, showed up to the disciples, showed up to some guys along the way, ascended to heaven, uh, and now, uh, then after he ascended, then last week we talked about how Peter had the Holy Spirit come upon him, fire on the guy's heads, remember fire, wind, yeah, that's why I don't have helpers this week, is because they went a little crazy, so uh, we're going to not have any of those camera tricks this week. So Acts chapter 3. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be using the New King James Version, but I also have uh, the uh, NIRV Version because some of the parts are a little bit easier uh, to understand. Uh, so here's the story. It says, Now Peter and John, so Peter and John together, went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain uh, man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. So there's this guy. Picture this, that he is, has, from day one, from birth, he couldn't walk. His legs uh, didn't work. And so it says daily they would come and bring him in front of the temple to essentially beg and ask for whatever they'll give him, money, uh, you know, just food. He'll, he'll ask for anything. And, uh, and so people every day going to the temple would see him. And at this point, if he's there every single day, I'm sure he's ignored by just about everybody. And uh, no one pays attention to him. He's there trying to get people's attention and everyone just walking by, walking by, walking by. But on this day, Peter and John are coming by. And now they stop and they actually talk to him. And so it says in verse 4, uh, and fixing his eyes on him with John and Peter, you know, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. So Peter and John actually like be like, hey, you, look at us. Look at me. Look at us. Here we are. And so he's like, awesome. I'm going to get something from these guys. And so in his mind, He's probably thinking, oh, they're going to give me money. They're going to give me something. And this is just an awesome verse in verse 6. Peter says to him, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I will give you. And so this guy probably was like, what are you going to give me them? You're going to give me like pocket lint? What are you, you know, it's like, what, what's going to come out there? And, he, and, he, and here's what he says to him. This is so awesome. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So Peter, not like, I'm not going to give you money. I'm going to make it so you can walk. Something that you haven't done for over 40 years. You have never done in your life. I'm going to give that to you. Like, Now, this guy, it doesn't say what his initial thoughts were. But I have to imagine initially he was just probably like, are you pulling my leg? Are you, are you 
joking with me? Like, are you messing with me? Like, I don't believe you, what, what's going on here? Like, have you seen my legs? Like, it doesn't say any of that, but it says, and he took him by the right hand. So Peter grabs him by the hand, takes him by the right hand and lifted him up. So grabs him hand and helps him up. He's like, reach my hand, pulls him up. And in verse seven, here's what it says. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So it's not like he got up and fell back down and then they had to help him back up and fell back down. And he slowly gets his way. Immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So immediately he had enough strength to walk. He had never walked a day in his life. He had been set there every single day. He had been begging and all of a sudden, just like that. Not only was he walking, verse eight, so he leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them. Here's the rest, walking, leaping and praising God. So he's jumping up and down. He's like, woo, God healed me. This is so amazing. Dancing around and obviously drawing attention to himself. And so people start looking at him like, who's, who's crazy guy here making all this noise? And it says all the people saw him and praising God. And then they recognized that it was the guy from out front. So they recognized that it was a guy sitting at the temple who's been there every single day and has been begging from him. And now he's walking around. They're probably like, what is happening? And so the lame man says who was healed, he was, he was holding on to Peter and John and all the people ran together to them. You know, and so when Peter saw it, so they're all coming around being like, what happened? Who did this? How did this happen? Asking all these questions. And so now... Peter has an option. Peter can do one of two things because these guys, they could, they're all coming like, wow, this is so amazing. How did you do it? He's walking. Now, Peter could be like, yeah, I am so amazing. Check me out. I just performed the greatest miracle you may have ever seen. But does he take the credit? No. In fact, he says, why do you marvel at this? Why, why do you marvel at this? And he says, why does this surprise you in another verse? Why do you stare at us? It's not, if, it's not as if we have made this man walk by our own power or godliness. He says, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob has done this. God has brought glory to Jesus who serves him. And so he gives the credit right back to Jesus. He take, doesn't take any of it whatsoever. He's in fact like, why are you looking at me? I didn't do it. Jesus did. That is so amazing. Like that's, that's like the desire that I want to have for my life is that I don't take credit for, you know, the, the things that happen in my life and the things that I, you know, I'm good at or skilled at is that I would give all credit to Jesus. And we'll get back to that. And so now let, let's, skip, let's skip forward to, to chapter four because everyone is obviously amazed by this and, and, they're, and, and Peter actually starts talking to them and, and tells them to repent and give their life to Jesus. And, and so all the people around are amazed and like are believing in what Peter and, and John are saying. And then verse four, or sorry, chapter four kicks in because it says in the first verse of chapter four, it says, now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, the Sadducees came upon them. And these were the old guys that were the ones who actually put Jesus to death. These were the old angry guys. And it says, they were being greatly disturbed that they taught the people, Peter and, and John, that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. So instead of being like, whoa, this is so amazing. I can't believe you did it. That is so cool. I mean, these were the religious people. Instead of being like, wow, that's so amazing. Way to go. Praise Jesus. They were mad. And in fact, they took them into custody. They basically arrested them. And they were like, mad because he healed a guy. But it says many of those in verse 4, who heard the word believed and the number of men who came 
basically backing up Peter and John was about 5,000. And so now all these, these religious people had to figure out what to do. And, and so in verse 7, they're like, by what power have you done this? Like, how did you do this? In verse 7. You know, it says, and then here's what it says, Peter being filled with the Holy Spirit, how he spawns when he's like, how do you do this? In whose name do you do it? And Peter says, do you want to know why we were kind to a man who couldn't walk? He says, then listen to this, you and all the people of Israel. It is through Jesus's name that this man stands healed in front of you. So he gives all credit to Jesus. And again, these are the people who are angry and being like, you can't be speaking in Jesus' name. And now in verse 13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled because they were like, okay, who are these guys? They're not priests. You know, they don't, they're not educated. You know, it's like they're not, but they're, they obviously did a miracle and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And they're like, oh, I know who these guys are. These are two of the guys that were with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. So it's not like they could deny the fact that this miracle happened because the guy was standing right next to him. He's like, look at my legs. And he's still probably jumping up and down, testing how strong his legs are. He's like, this is amazing, doing jumping jacks. He's like, hey, check this trick out and kicking his feet all around. And so the, the, the priests and the Sadducees, they couldn't be like, that never happened. They didn't heal anyone because all the people saw. So they realized they had this problem on their hands. So like they go out to have a little sidebar. They go out to like confer. And so they're like, what are we going to do with these guys? And so they, they're like, I got it. It says in verse 17, we're basically going to give them a really strong warning not to do it again. And so it says, but so it spreads no further in verse 17 among the people. Let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. And so they called Peter and John, commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. And so, so, they, so they come in and be like, don't you ever do that again. Like, I'm warning you. I'm going to be really mad if you do that again for healing a guy, which is crazy in and of itself. But Peter and John replied, and this is, this is the, the reply that we need to, because remember, these, bat, these guys, the, the priests, the Sadducees, they were like, don't do it anymore. Here's what Peter and John say. Which is right from God's point of view? Should we listen to you? Or should we listen to God? You be the judges. There's nothing else we can do. We have, have to speak about the things we have seen and heard. It says the leaders warned them again, then they let them go. They couldn't decide how to punish Peter and John. They knew that all the people were praising God for what had happened. And then finishes the, the man who had been healed by the miracle was over 40 years old. And so they're like, what are we supposed to do? Listen to you or listen to God? Because we have been with Jesus. We know that Jesus is God. So why would I listen to you? Because if I listen to you, then I'm not listening to God. And, and I think that is such a just good question for our lives. It's like, who should we be listening to? Should we be listening to people and what they say of what we should be doing or should be listening to God? And now you're like, well, how do I know what God's telling me? Well, the Bible, prayer, you know, actually taking time to listen, letting people speak through you, through other people into your lives. And, and, but ultimately, this is our playbook that we need to see how we should live because Ultimately, we have the answer of how we should respond because God has given each and every one of us talents. God has given you a talent, many talents, not just one. It could be playing the piano. It could be singing. It could be math. It could be, you know, just being a good friend, being loving, 
being funny. You know, it doesn't matter what it is, being good at sports. And we have the option. We could be like Peter where we praise God and we give credit to Jesus for that ability. Or we could be pointing at ourselves about how amazing we are. And just like I said earlier, like my desire is that I would give credit elsewhere. Like even for these messages, like if you're getting something out of it, it's like, it's not me. It's Jesus working through me. You know, and, and all the good things that are coming about in your life, I mean, that's Jesus working through you and, and how we go about speaking to other people about Jesus. If you're not sure what to say, it says right here, what did Peter do? He didn't come up with his own words. It says the Holy Spirit filled him. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in us just like the disciples and then work through us. But that is just such an awesome question that we need to to ask ourselves is should we listen to you or we should we listen to God and and all that matters is that we need to listen to God because Peter and John knew the truth Peter and John saw the miracles that Jesus did they saw the miracle that they just did I mean, these are just two guys. I mean, there's nothing special about Peter and John, two guys that happened to be called by Jesus and walked with Jesus, believed in Jesus, and now they were doing miracles themselves. It wasn't them, but Jesus through them. So it's like, how could you not believe? And so if someone tells you like these Sadducees and he's like, stop doing that. Wait, like, yeah, sorry. I'm going to keep trusting in Jesus. And that's what I want for us is to keep trusting in Jesus and look to God on how we should behave, on how we should act, because our lives should be all to show the glory of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today, and we thank you for this message. Lord, we just ask you to help us just remember this, that who should we be listening to? Should we be listening to what the world wants us to do, what our friends want us to do, or what it is that you want us to do. And so help us seek wisdom on what it is you want for our lives by reading the Bible, by listening to these messages, by praying, just by spending more time with you. And we love you. We thank you for all that you do for us in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, amen. All right, my friends, I'll be right back with our three questions. All right, here's the three questions for you. First question is, what was it that Peter said to the man who couldn't walk? What was the exact quote that Peter said to the man who couldn't walk? That's question number one. Question number two, what did the priests feel? How did they respond when they found out that the lame man could walk? That's question two. And then question three, and this is kind of that, uh, again, that discussion question to think about, but how can we do a better job of giving credit to Jesus? Like what are specific things that we can do to give Jesus the credit instead of pointing the finger at us. So how can we do a better job of giving Jesus the credit? So answer those three questions, talk them through with your uh, family, um, you know, and get excited for VBS. I think it's gonna be an awesome summer. I'm a little bummed that we're not gonna be on campus, but this is gonna be awesome. So start telling your friends, start telling your families, Keep catching us, uh, all the information coming online. We're going to have some new stuff coming in June, and, and we'll start up a new weekly challenge on Monday. Lots of stuff happening. We're excited, and uh, have an awesome day. We'll see you guys soon.